Me. The fact that we are allowed to go to military academy is remarkable. It's not open to everybody. Has everyone got a rifle apart from the specialists? Who doesn't have a rifle? Everyone got their weapons? First year, when we came to the academy, we were all so excited. Here was a bunch of girls training to be paratroopers. How could that be? You wouldn't believe that it was real. Are all machine gunners fully equipped? I can't say that my childhood dream was to be a paratrooper in the army. No, I wanted to be an actress or a doctor, try to find a place where I would be needed the most, where I would fulfill my potential. Come here, everybody. This is how you handle the cartridge pouch. You attach it to the belt and that's it. Let's report for inspection. Attention, company! Fall in! Good morning, comrades! Good day, comrade major! At ease! I want you to pay special attention to safety precautions during firing practice. Fall out! March forward to the training range! We have the concept of gender training. This means that boys and girls are educated in the same academy. If you compare the level of training of both the boys and girls in one course, I can tell you that the girls have a more serious attitude towards everything than the boys do. It's seen in their nature, and it's clearly seen in their studies. Of course, joining the army is not something that women usually do. Girls running around with rifles is an unusual sight, when they should be, I don't know, at home making soup or helping mom with the household chores. Of course the guys were stunned when they first saw us. Hey girls, let's play tag to warm up. We are cold waiting for the ammunition to arrive before the start of the training exercises, so we do what we can to get warm. Now it's not as much of a problem as it was four years ago. We've become used to the cold since then. Every second person, bend your knees. Go! Most of our training takes place in the academy. Instructors tell us what we must do and show us how to do it. Good day, comrades. Good morning, Lieutenant Colonel. At ease. At ease. Take your seats. Be seated. Today, we'll have to make sure that first, that you have learned about how to assault forces capture targets in population centers. Look here. Assault groups begin their approach to reach their objective, which is designated on the line. Pay attention to the first landmark, a damaged vehicle 50 meters to the left. Our main aim is to teach them to manage their units in battle while performing combat tasks. They have to destroy the enemy while preventing the loss of as many of their units as possible. In your opinion, which of the units mentioned by you will be equipped with the rocket-propelled grenades? I want all the others to be ready to give an answer. We spend most of the time in the academy here. That's where we're permanently stationed. And here we have regular lessons in various subjects such as tactics. An assault group includes a grenade launch squad. It's never broken up to allow fire support groups or individual crews to share its power. That's because only one person is in command of it, and it would be hard for them to control it from different positions. What is the function of the rear guard? 
Назначение. To cover? Cover what? Something in back, probably? Let's go back. You said yourself that you want to create an element in the form of an assault group. Ah, like that. Another assault group is operating on the side. This means that it'll be providing cover either here or here. The left flank is exposed, as you can see. Yes. This means the left flank will be covered. Ah, the left flank. So the cover group is performing its correct task, right? Exactly. Write that down. Most of the teaching here in the academy concerns theory. We translate theory into life in the field. What I mean is that our teachers give us the basic knowledge to be able to act as commanders of platoons and companies in the field. For better troop management, the company's commander has designated call signs for other officers. Can you recall what those call signs are? May I name them, Comrade Colonel? Go ahead. Omo 10 for assault group number one. Go on. The call sign for assault group number two is Omut 01. I enjoy lessons and tactics. I like all of the instructors. Everyone has their own teaching method. Some raise their voice to drive a point home. Some use their piercing eyes for the same purpose. Others speak so persuasively that even if you don't understand what they're talking about, you get the feeling that you've known it all along, that you've heard every single word before. That happens sometimes. A loud voice only comes in handy when the command commander of an assault group is giving orders, but the commander of an assault group can't be heard by officers who are far away from you. The noise would be about this loud. Now try shouting over that if it's three or four times louder. You'll have no chance of making yourself heard. You'll have to use radio communication. Teaching them to give orders in a loud, clear voice is one of the aims of the lessons. They need to learn to be in control of themselves in the field conditions. The problem is that if they haven't practiced commands before, they often feel ill at ease in the field, even if they know how to do it in theory. For example, your machine gunner is over there. What's the approximate distance between you two? Maybe four meters? Four meters. Okay, it's five or six. All right then. I want you to change the target number. So when you start to give orders, change the number. Crew number one. Reference point number three, site number four, low target, fire. Stop. When you're in command in the field, you put a different slant on the situation and you begin to find your feet. It's an interesting feeling. You realize that other lives depend on you and your actions as well as your own. When we get to the training center, there will be one more classroom training session with you lasting an hour. There you will practice the following situation involving designated officers. All eyes on the scene. When they go to the training center, their exercise will be to put into action what they've learned in my lessons, how they should behave in the field. Looking through binoculars, the platoon commander and his scout spot a sharpshooter. Where is he? Downstairs. Look. Spotting a sniper is quite lucky. What's your next move? Eliminate. Eliminate. General Suvorov said that theory without practice means death. The cadets learn the basics of troop control in the classroom. This is the first small step in their training. But it's in the combat situation that they have the opportunity to manage troops for real. That's when they become fully aware of what's going to happen in real battle. 
We simulate a field combat situation with enemy troops facing them. When they are out there, they're in full outfit and have communications equipment and combat vehicles at their disposal. First line, about turn, and on your left knee. Machine gunners, shoulder your weapons. Get your magazines out and load them. I'm indifferent to some small arms. I don't really think that I don't like using them, it's just I don't really get much out of them. But others, well, that's a different story. When I hold them in my hands, I think I see myself as a great spy or a paratrooper. Is your magazine full? Have a look. <laughs> we don't use live ammunition during practice, but even blank cartridges are dangerous. If you fire point blank, for instance, you may harm the soldier. We've seen many examples, like you can even put a hole through plywood if you fire close enough. Even blanks can be deadly. Two minutes left. All section commanders to me. Listen up, the enemy is in the populated area of Dorohi, one and a half kilometers from here. We must capture and destroy the enemy. We begin advancing from the eastern side. The second section will send the scout squad. I'm in command of the first section. The third section will provide cover. That's all. Move out. March! To the left, Anya! Get in! When our unit was on the move, one of the armored vehicles broke down. The third section immediately dispersed from it. Mechanics set about repairing the incapacitated vehicle. One more time. Such situations do happen sometimes. We would have abandoned the vehicle in a combat situation. Later, it would have been fixed by a special unit. But on that occasion, we had to have it fixed because we needed the vehicle for training purposes. It was repaired by driver mechanics because they've got a lot of experience with these things. After all, that vehicle is pretty heavy. Damn it! Put it around the drive wheel! I think we could have fixed it ourselves. We know how to handle caterpillar tracks because we've practiced it. It's relatively simple. The driver mechanics quickly fixed the vehicle. In the meantime, we put up a defense perimeter. At one point, we spotted two enemy soldiers. Engage, engage. They're to the left. Platoon, fire. Once the enemy is spotted, they should be taken out. We eliminated them this time. Great. Section, advance, two at a time. We're going to clear the building. Attention. Number one. Number two. Number three. Go. We can't just head straight to the population center, because enemy troops may have set up defenses. This means we have to comb through the area and inspect the buildings. The job was entrusted to the second section. The task was, well, I don't know how to explain it better. 
Their task was to discover and destroy the enemy. Forward! Omut 10, this is Omut 01. I see civilians. Omut 01, Omut 10 reads you. Over. Ready to go. Forward. When my section inspected a couple of households, we found civilians there, but no enemy troops. Everything worked out fine in the end. Section commanders to me! Now, into the trench where you'll be told about your target. Move. Inside me there is a bit of fear, excitement, interest, the desire to quickly complete the task. My heart starts pounding twice as fast. Attention, section commanders. We are now on the northernmost edge of the ruins. There are up to 30 enemy troops here. The objective is to destroy them and seize the buildings. The first assault group will take control of the first floor. The second assault group is to take the first floor of the second building. The rear guard will cover the entire platoon. Now we ride out. I'll be waiting for you in the vehicle. Get in! Cover group, head to the third vehicle. Tactics training is exciting. You get immersed in the role and forget about everything else. You are completely caught up in the situation. You have only seen it before in films and computer games, and you feel that you're the main hero of the film. You always have to be alert, to quickly react, to read the terrain. You know, I think part of it is creativity. Go, go, faster! When you sit in a classroom and give orders, that's one thing. You've got enough time to think everything over and figure out what you can say or do and how to do it. But when you are on the battlefield and see explosions going off all around you, your thoughts become messed up. So you need to pull yourself together. You realize that you are responsible for those people. Move forward! There was one moment when a fellow service woman named Katya was too close to me, and she was only a couple of meters away when she fired off a sniper round. At first, I thought somebody had fired from one of the vehicles. I turned around only to see Katya with a big grin on her face. She apologized to me. Yes, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> There are snipers on the second floor. Of course, all the platoon soldiers need to be alert all the time. The teachers instructing us in tactics give us tasks of the kind that we might use in battle. Obviously, nobody should be killed in the process. But other than that, everything is real. Engagements, takeovers, gunfire, weapons, ammunition. It's all real. Yes. One. Two. The only thing that I don't like is that we use blank cartridges. 
If we, no, no, I don't mean that we need live ammunition. We just have no other way of knowing whether we've hit somebody or not. I suggest using something like paintball pellets so we can see what we've actually hit. When you're sitting somewhere waiting for the offensive, you see the troops coming. Nobody knows whether anybody is hit. Your voice doesn't carry that far, but even if somebody hears you, they can't understand who you're addressing. Move forward, group. First and second, the door's on the left. Go. Heads up. When we began storming the building, it felt authentic. I really liked it because the action felt so real. I even felt scared because somebody could have genuinely be hurt. But everything worked out fine. Move up! We made the most of our training exercise. These drills are very useful because it takes training closer to the real thing. For instance, the cadets get used to the sound of gunfire. If, God forbid, we have to go to war and we have to be deployed in combat, then we're likely to find our job a bit easier. The building has been captured. Move forward, group. For the guys, they tend to be slower on the uptake. But when they do a job, they see it through to the end. With the girls, it's a bit different. If they come up against problems, they might give in to them. During breaks in lessons, I ask them sometimes, how they see themselves in the future. I talk to them either collectively or individually, and they are serious about serving in the army. They are a determined lot. Any leftover rounds? Checked. Checked. There are moments when it suddenly occurs to you that you might be sent on a combat mission at some point in the future. That's why you keep a watch on your unit. But I trust my comrades. I'm sure they will follow my lead and back me up. They'll never betray me. Get together for the picture. Hurry up. Everybody, come here. Wait, where's the camera? Perfect. <laughs> Forward, march. When we started, we were told that it's not for women, that we better pack up because we wouldn't be able to cope with the training. What do you need all this for? Why are you here? They would say to us. And then there was one guy who said that our maternal instinct was so powerful that it wasn't a family we should protect, but the whole country. Mama. Yeah.